What should I be doing? <laughs> The official term, you often hear it in, in schools and in art schools, you hear it, it's called ceramics, right? And somehow something clicked in my head where I said, well, this is what I want to do. I'm not sure how it's going to turn out or how well, who, who I'll study with, where I'll go with it. But um, I just embarked on the journey. As I grew older and I went through high school and started thinking about where to go to school, Vermont really stood out in my mind. And um, I was very lucky to have a, an instructor who really riveted me to the whole um, the art form of working in ceramics. Uh, his name was Hideo Okino, and he was a great teacher and huge influence on me. spend a lot of time studying an aesthetic and trying to understand it. And then you also have to figure out how to actually work. And in my case, it would be learning how to throw on the wheel. So you learn how to manipulate the clay. And you put in years and years of just uh, learning a technique. In the end, you can forget about what you've learned and you just start making good work. That's the hope. <laughs> So what, I, what my favorite pieces are, um, there's a bit of a struggle in determining the form. So you're a little bit on the edge of your comfort zone. Natural beauty and um, a little bit of mystery and struggling with technique, maybe it's scale. Slowly give birth to this form that's really, really complete in itself, has balance, has vitality, has a little tension. What's interesting with clay, it's, it's immediate, like it's soft. So it, when you arrive at this form, and you, either, you can either stop and, and then preserve it, and it'll fire and it'll be there forever, or you can keep going and change the form. So you have to know when to stop. The ones that are really good, they're just a, it's a real gift somehow. They're so beautiful you want to put them away somewhere. <laughs> and then maybe pull them out once in a while. getting to a point where I thought, you know, it, it's sort of lonely work and sometimes you can't share it with anybody and you're so involved in thinking about all these forms and thinking about glaze calculation and, and wouldn't it be nice to be able to share it. I just sort of took a stab at this idea of teaching and I found it very uh, rewarding just to get, just to be able to explain a process that I understood fairly well. And so you want to sort of pass some of that on, because you figure things out as you, as you go along. What's best about working with 20 college kids, there's a real desire to learn, for one thing. And there's, there's such an excitement about life and what lies before them. So they're open to uh, information. And then what comes back is, really fresh and spontaneous work. So that's really the benefit for me because I keep getting, my reservoir keeps getting refilled from having that exchange with the students. I try and get to a place where it's, I'm not really the subject and it's more about the process. And if you don't get in the way with your own ego. I'm sort of like the, uh, the mediator between <laughs> the material and uh, divine or something. It's something something in between. That would be the best situation. You know? And in the end, if you get if you end up with a really good piece of of work, it's it's a real gift because it's had to go through so many different processes that you can't really control. So it, if you end up with something great then it's you're so thankful, you know. <laughs> studied really hard.